Hello, my name is Chris Woodruff, and I'm a student at the University of Arkansas Monticello. My final presentation is on GPS, GIS, Google Earth. I'm going to show how education is evolving and taking us from a standard paper map to a new online digital map. What is Google Earth? To understand this, you need to know a little bit about GPS and how GIS works together. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. It uses up to 30 satellites orbiting around the Earth. These satellites are around 20 kilometers in altitude and it has a process called trilateration that takes three satellites to pinpoint your location. So you have A, B, and C and where the, all three of them meet is where you are located. It was originally developed for the United States government for military navigation, but now GPS is readily available for anybody that has a handheld device or a, that has internet or a mobile device with data connection. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, and what it does, it's a system of capturing, storing, checking, and displaying data related to positions on Earth's surface. And one of the ways it does this is through zip codes. It was developed in the 1960s. A guy named Roger Tomlinson is viewed as the pioneer of the GIS system. It was first used to store and analyze data about land usage in Canada. So how do these tie together to create Google Earth? Well, they work together to give us a digital version of our world at our fingertips. If you're able to see, you're able to see this anywhere and you're able to see anything in the world as long as you have internet or mobile data device. It shows real images of cities, towns, objects of interest, and even your house just by typing in an address and these two technologies working together. Interesting facts about Google Earth. They have over 21 million gigabytes of data collected. They have over 5 million miles of street view available to walk on and to, to see the sites. Uh, the photos are updated in as little as two weeks, or at most, three years. They share images they collect with Google Maps that you have on Google Maps on your phone or through your GPS for your car. And they have auto blur technology that blurs out people's faces and license plates automatically. To show you a little more about how Google Earth is used and how it is used in the classroom, here's a short three minute video. Hey there, AT and Tim here with a new episode of EDU at 90. Today we're talking all about Google Earth and how it can be helpful in the classroom. Google Earth has been around for quite some time and it's never been easier to get it up and running in your classroom. The Earth experience can be explored directly from your Chrome browser through earth.google.com. Let's jump in. To start, let's look at some basic navigation in Google Earth. You can use the buttons in the bottom right hand corner to easily zoom in on the area you want to explore more closely. And if you get lost, you're able to use the compass to get reoriented and back on track. By toggling the 2D 3D button, you can get to a 3D isometric view of the area. This view allows you to check out detailed 3D models of buildings and to get a better sense of geographic features like hills and elevation. Searching for a particular city will pull up an info card on the top right. You can click on this card to bring up information from Google's knowledge graph. Here, you can find background information about the city, check out places of interest, and then make the jump to view them on Earth. Google's famous I'm feeling lucky option for search has also made its way to Earth. By clicking on the die on the left sidebar, your students will be randomly taken to one of 20,000 interesting places on Earth. Let's dive deeper into classroom uses for Earth. For lesson preparation, teachers can pre-populate bookmark lists of locations, then easily navigate through them during class. Also, any individual Earth location can be shared directly to the classroom using the share button on the left navigation bar. Educators can share a specific location and include contextual questions for students to investigate within Earth. Another new, highly requested feature is the measure tool. After selecting it from the left navigation bar, you can measure point to point or form enclosed spaces to determine the area inside. 
This can help your students compare the size of cities, monuments, and more. Voyager is Earth's hub for location-based storytelling. There's a lot of content here, including an education category with interactive articles created by Google Earth partners like PBS, National Geographic, and BBC Earth. At each location, there are additional photos, videos, and annotations that teach you about the location in the context of the larger story. Another new feature in Voyager is data layers. There are a variety of layers, including things like current weather, sea surface temperature, and wind speed patterns. You can select these layers and then browse the globe to see their real-time effect. At the moment, there are nine layers to select from, but keep an eye out for more coming soon. We've highlighted a few cool features of Earth in this episode, but the possibilities are truly endless. While it's easy to get lost for hours in pure exploration, there are plenty of structured uses for the classroom. If you use Earth in your classroom, we'd love to hear how. Let us know in the comments below. And stay tuned for more episodes of EDUN90. So some of the ways you can use it in your class and the different subjects. If you're a science teacher, you can use it to find ocean depths or the thermal crust temperatures or even to look at space. If you're a math teacher, you can calculate square miles of a country, do the, uh, learn coordinates, or do distance from point A to point B. If you teach history, you can go on virtual tours of different museums, important geographic places such as Rome, the Great Wall of China, or even the pyramids of Egypt. To access Google Earth, you will go to this website, earth.google.com, and it will bring up this window. So just to highlight a few, one example of each subject, we're going to look up the Great Wall of China. You hit enter and it's going to search for it. It's going to turn the earth and then zoom in on it. And it doesn't always pinpoint you exactly to the where you need to be. So you can zoom out. You can find the wall, drag over to it, and then zoom back in. And you can zoom out and see just how large the wall is. And once you zoom in a little bit, as the video said, you can hit this pinpoint location and click on one of the blue dots, and it'll take you down to the wall and actually give you a view of what it looks like off of the wall. And it'll buffer out. Some pictures are not as clear as others. And you click on the little pinpoint guy, and it goes back. So that was like if you're going to teach history or if you want to teach science, we're going to look up Mariana's Trench. So it's going to zoom all the way back out, spin the earth, and then zoom in on it. So the pictures under the ocean aren't real good, but it has this drop-down menu here that will tell you different things about it. It tells you the elevation is 36,000 below sea level. Uh, the trench itself is 11,034 meters deep, which is higher than Mount Everest. And then it has different uh, categories here that relate to the trench. So you can click on them and learn more about what you want to do and have an actual visual aid to help the student. So we'll back out here. If you want to use it for math class, let's use the United States as an example. So say we want, we're working on distance, and we want to know the distance from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean across the United States in a direct line. We'll hit this measurement tool. We'll start on the Pacific, just click it once, straight across to the Atlantic, click it again, and it'll tell us the measurement up here. It's 26,027 miles. But you can have this drop down menu and you can click different measurements to see it in different ways. So back to the presentation, there's just a few different ways you can use Google Earth. What are some pros and cons of Google Earth? 
one of the pros would be virtual field trips. You can go anywhere in the world that you want to with your class without the school costing anything and field, uh, having permission slips. It provides a learning visual aid. It has a documentation of important information on different places that's provided to your students. It improves some students' comprehension of major concepts. Some of the cons, it's time consuming. Uh, you'll get lost just searching and looking around. You must have decent internet or data and compatible hardware to run it. And some things are difficult to locate, like the Great Wall of China. It wasn't direct to it. Another website that uses the same imagery was Google Maps. So go to Google Maps and see it. This is the one you normally see like when you pull up your GPS but you can hit satellite image and this is the Google Maps imagery. So you can click on here, you can zoom in, click on a state and it's going to bring up the same little access card and tell you about the state. You can zoom in more like Oklahoma City here. You can pinpoint here and it'll take you down to street view just like Google Map. I can zoom in a little. It's not working. So, some other interesting places you can see uh, on through your website uh, is these the websites here, and it has interesting things people have found on Google Earth, and it gives you the coordinates to find it so you can see them for yourself. And here's my bibliography for the resources I used, and I hope this presentation was as insightful to y'all as it was to me. Thank you.